We're here with Kirk Acevedo, the founder of Scholarships for Burma, who recently went into the country Burma and trucked miles to raise money for a shun girl from Burma to go to college. Thanks, Kirk. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me, Kay. So, a lot of people have read your story. I've read your story, and my first thought was, you know, why is this young Caucasian boy, why is he helping out a young, you know, Burmese girl that, with what affiliation? <laughs> yeah. You know? I went there. Okay. I think that's... I think that's probably the biggest moment for any of us when we travel abroad and if we all have, for those of us that work in, let's say, nonprofit organizations, mm -hmm. those who are providing education loans, mm -hmm. so, so scholarships so that refugees can go to school, things like that. Mm -hmm. We go to the Thai Burma border, like I did, for example, and we meet with these wonderful women doing amazing things, incredible things. She happened to be in Chiang Mai, and I was there with a group of students from American University, there was 15 of us. And we just sat down and she told us her story. And she had never spoken before in front of Americans. This was her first time. And it was just the most heartbreaking story I'd ever heard. Mm -hmm. And that was heartbreaking, but to see what she was doing and where she was going and her dreams and her aspirations and everything she wanted to do, and to know that all it took was a college education mm -hmm. and that she couldn't get it, no. We're in a, we're in, as Americans, we're in an incredible position to help to help others around the world. And a, a college dream in Thailand isn't that much money. And I was taken aback by your story with surprise um, because I feel like you do understand that about feminism, about, about the exploitation of young women in Southeast Asia and around the world. And so are you telling me that you're, you want to help educate this, this girl because you believe that in some way it can eradicate violence and the exploitation of more women. I think for me it happens to work out well that way. Okay. Ying, Ying just happened to be the one that was standing in front of me telling me her story and it just, like I said, it broke my heart and wanted me to help her to change, to make her dream come true. But yeah, I've noticed that a trend, at least in the Chiang Mai area when I was working, she works for an organization called Shan Youth Power. Mm -hmm. It reaches about 300 out of 80,000 migrants that live in the Chiang Mai area. And there's an incredible need for educating these people that work on largely construction sites. They build the expats' homes that you see in the Chiang Mai area. And just to, just to see what she was doing and how passionate and caring she was and to see those who she worked with who were also passionate and caring and who happened to be women, you go back and you read the books and you realize that they say things like women, when you educate a woman, you educate a nation. When you educate a woman, she cares. She's going to teach about HIV AIDS. Ying's doing that. She goes back into Shan State of Burma, and she runs these courses on education, saying, "Hey, you don't have, you know, when you use sterile needles, if you're going to, you know, things like this. Mm -hmm. If you're going to shoot up, use sterile needles. Mm -hmm. If you're going to have sex, wear a condom. I mean, mm -hmm. these aren't topics we like talking about, but they're so important. And in the case of Burma, where you have, I think it's 1.3, 1.5 of the percent of the population infected with HIV AIDS." Mm -hmm. It's a serious problem. You have hundreds of thousands of cases a year, and Ying is at the front of this trying to educate these people. You told me about Ying's story. You were saying right. that, well, I was, you know, I was surprised by her story, and I just had to help her. What was her story? And her story, and I didn't even mention it earlier, but her story is that she left school because her mom died, and she went with her dad to Thailand. And she ended up working to support him because he had tuberculosis. So she supports him during the day, and then she sends money back in about once a week for her sister to stay in school in Burma. And it's incredible because it's, it's not an exception, I think, for Southeast Asia. Um, and I, let me just start it by saying I, I recently read this article by Christoph um, where he... Where yes, he Nicholas talks, Christoph, yeah, Nicholas Christoph, yeah, Nicholas Christoph, yeah, exactly, columnist. exactly. Yeah. And I blogged about it because I, I read it. A friend sent it to me. Mm -hmm. A friend's dad sent it to mm -hmm. me, and I read it, and it was just. I said, "This is Ying, and she's in Vietnam." Mm -hmm. He was talking about this Vietnamese woman who never had the chance to go to school. Yeah, she supported her brother. She woke up at I think three thirty, four o'clock in the morning, just so she could get her chores out of the way, so that she could prepare to go to school, and so that she could study on her own. I mean, she was doing. She cared so much 
to affect change. You know? I'm so glad that you mentioned Kristoff because yeah. I follow him avidly on Twitter. Yeah. And um, <laughs> and I'm I'm uh, reading his book Half the Sky about half this about women holding half the sky up. Mm -hmm. And do you can you explain a little bit more because you've seen it firsthand how women can can change a community within within these these camps like refugee camps or within yeah. um, within their economic hardship in Southeast Asia sure I so when I met Ying it was at Altsion I have to back up so okay. she was she was in Bangkok doing an internship and that's where I first met her mm -hmm. and she was passionate about education and she, all she said at the time was I want to go back to my community there's students just like me when I was a kid and I want to teach them because I know that they don't have these opportunities and I happen to fight for what I have now. So I want to go back and show them the way, essentially. That's what she wanted to do. So I come back two years later. This is after I find out, this is when we start scholarships for Burma, after I find out she's back in Chiang Mai. Mm -hmm. And all I hear is that she's teaching migrant youth living in the Chiang Mai area. And it's, it's squalor. It's not, these aren't, these aren't livable conditions. It's, I, you know, it, it's, it's sad to see. But Ying shows up and everyone runs over and they say, Ko Ying, Ko Ying, Ko Ying, Teacher Ying, Teacher Ying, <laughs> right? Yeah. Isn't that what Ko means, Ko teacher? Yeah. And they run up and they're so excited and enthused because they know that when she comes into the construction camp, that means they get to go to the school and they get to, she's bringing books and they can mm -hmm. sit down, they can learn how to write in Shan or mm -hmm. they can learn how to write in Burmese or English. And she is their ticket to education. So now I know what you're saying because I was talking to a colleague of mine and he was asking, well, you know, the Scholarships for Burma site, he was looking at it and he said, this is admirable what this guy's doing, what this man is doing. However, there are so many educational problems in Burma. Sure. You know, little, there, there's no education. He's, that's what he's trying to say. But then why is Kirk Acevedo, why is he helping this one girl? And you're helping this girl because you believe that she can help other generations to come because women are the link to, to communities and families and children. Is that what you're saying? Can, can in, her, in her corner of the world, and yeah, I know exactly where yeah. you're going. In her corner of the world, yeah, absolutely. But I think that scholarships for Burma was never meant just about Ying, and it certainly wasn't meant about me or anyone else who's really involved mm -hmm. in helping out. This is, this is largely about raising awareness for Burma, and that's something mm -hmm. you can't underestimate. This is the reason we started the website. The bigger picture of all this, when you zoom out, it's people care about Burma. If mm -hmm. we can get them to care, then this is, this is ultimately a much better good. Why were you trucking? What was the point of going from Mandalay to <laughs> Rangoon? And how many miles is it? 450 or, miles, you said? Yeah, about 450 50 miles. miles. Okay, so tell yeah. me, where did you get that idea, and what did trucking actually <laughs> do for scholarships? So the original plan, and you have to remember, this was all set up. Like for, it was set up first mm -hmm. um, before we knew how this would even work. Mm -hmm. I mean, we set up this entire organization and then launched it. So we weren't sure if people would even support the walk. People supported the idea. That was enough. The story itself was enough. And we didn't even need to bring out, hey, will you support per mile I walk? But that was one of the ideas. Each mile I walk, will you give a dollar, two dollars, five dollars, ten dollars? All your money. I pay for my entire walk and all the money goes directly to this, to Ying scholarship. That was the idea. And you initially said that you did this, did this walk because people were sponsoring each dollar for each mile that you walked, right, for we're, Ying. Yeah. So how much money have you made within, within these months? And I should say, no one, no one actually sponsored per mile the walk. That was the original idea, original but we idea. never had to use it because pe people were just, this is a great idea. Um, we love what you're doing, and, um, you know, here's our support. We've raised now just over $20,000. We just broke that limit um, last week. So we're at $21,000 and then if, uh, some change. $21,000 in how many some months? Change. Just under seven months. Just under seven yeah, months. Just under seven months. And this will provide Ying with enough money to go to college for four years. This is everything, Kay. We're talking tuition, housing, cost of books, her her cost of living while she's in Chiang Mai, everything. I sat down um, before 
she, before we even launched it uh, with Pi Up University, which mm -hmm. is where she wanted to go to school. Actually, there were about three mm -hmm. schools she was looking at, um, but we thought she could have the best effect in Chiang Mai because mm -hmm. that's where her students were. Mm -hmm. And you know, if enough people can rally behind supporting one woman so she can change others, then why not? It's, why not? And I really do believe that educating yeah. this woman, Ying, as well as others, will will actually give access to equality for all women yeah. and and for all communities. I hope so. Definitely. Thank you so much. It's thank so you. admirable what yeah. you're doing. Thank you. Thank you for coming. I appreciate it. Yeah.